awesome, guys. All right. We have a very, very rare bourbon here. Very special. Uh, shout out to Vitaly uh, for sending out, sending this out to us. Thanks, Vitaly. Uh, Old Crow Chessman Decanter, 1959-1969. slash It's a very, very rare um, old bourbon. Obviously, from 1959. There's not much, much research out there, but... There is some, and a lot of people that talk about this, they speak extremely highly of it. Some people have even said it's their very favorite bourbon they've ever tried. Um, I, the talk, uh, Tali, correct us if we're wrong, but this is bottled at 43% ABV. You know, write it down on here, so I can't, I don't have those facts, but I believe that that's what it is. Um, this has been breathing for a good 30 minutes, and the color on it is just so... Dark, so, so, so dark. So dark for a bourbon. Look at that color. It's just full blown, beyond hoggy, turning almost like. Almost like. Reddish. Rich, yeah, rich, dark mahogany. And all the, all the uh, research we're seeing, it's obviously 10 year, they say 86 proof, but how they all comment, they can't believe how dark the bourbon is. On the nose. You know, we have been nosing this as it's been breathing. It's, it is fairly straightforward. I'm not getting a ton of complexity, but it is delicious on the nose. It just makes you want to take a sip so badly. It's not doing 10 million different things, but one thing it's doing is it's, it's very gourmet in the sense where it doesn't give off, it doesn't give off any kind of funky, unnecessary, like alcoholic flavors or any extreme amount of, of maple syrupy sugariness. It's just so smooth. It's so fruity and yummy and chocolatey. It's got, it's got like very smooth, very milky caramel to, flavor to it on the nose. It's not very spicy. It's extremely just smooth and silky. It's not very oaky. It's just a very luscious nose. It's very fruity, caramel, a little bit of chocolate. Not super complex, but it is very fruity. This is not a bourbon. It doesn't smell like a bourbon. It smells like a scotch. This is like, it's like a dessert party. But like Narvi's saying, some of the most gourmet and exquisite desserts you can think of, like multiple varieties of creme brulee, like warm, gooey butter cake, if you've ever had that. Butter cake is great. Butter cake. Yeah, that was it. But even the butter cake uh, we get at Astro's yeah. with the sugar layer on the That's good. like heavy and like, yeah, and like again, the creme brulee, like heavy layers of sugared and caramelized elements. Uh, Elements of cream, honey, vanilla, and even like Narby said, like candy bars, like chocolate. It's like Milky Way. Yeah, chocolate, nougat, caramel, nutty, but I've never had, you know, everyone says like maybe, you know, some of the pappies are good after dinner, good dessert bourbons, but no, those don't hold a candle. This is like the ultimate dessert bourbon right here. And we, we've had a lot of scotches that are very, very old, some extremely collectible scotches, because that's mainly what we collect. Uh, and we do have a lot of bourbons as well, uh, e even though we have a lot, we've tried many, many more scotches, but we haven't tried a lot of old, old bourbons. You know, we've tried the Pappy lineups and, and, and some unique bourbons, but a lot of them are newer releases. We haven't had a ton of bourbons from the 1950s and 60s. So this is the least bourbon -y bourbon I've ever noticed. So maybe it's all like that. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, it's just like us. We always talk about Old Spring Bank. It's some of the yeah. best whiskey ever. Whiskey, just there's no whiskey like it anymore. But if we had never tried that, we just wouldn't know about it. So we don't really know too much about old, old, old bourbon. So we don't have a ton of experience there. And this 1959 is probably the oldest style the oldest bourbon we've ever tried. Yeah. So it could be the same thing. No, no. That, that's the great style back then, you know? Definitely different. Um, wow. On the palate, I'm, I'm anxious to try this. Let's do it. Definitely wish all the bourbon was like this today. 
Oh wow. Almost too drinkable. Not a bourbon. <laughs> wow. You can. It's. I wouldn't say it's a scotch either. It's, it leans bit, for me yeah. more leans more towards a bourbon than a scotch. Yeah. Um. But. It's. It's juicy. It, uh, it's actually too drinkable. I'll, it's almost like it's thirty five percent ABV. It's like yeah. too drinkable. I'm not saying and and I'm um, you know it doesn't need to be more. But it's very, very, very drinkable at 43%. Oh, yeah. So definitely no water to this. Um, it's not extremely viscous. It doesn't, like, take over on the palate. So it's slightly thin, but it's very enjoyable. And a lot of the flavors that you get on the nose kind of hit that creaminess, that vanilla. Um, definitely, definitely getting um, the fruitiness from it along with that. That sweet butter cake that yeah. you mentioned, was, I think, was thought was a really, really good note. Um, really nice. Definitely getting that creamy chocolate, that creamy cal caramel. Makes me think of a, a more gourmet version of a Milky Way bar. Mm -hmm. um, but my only complaint is that it's not ex extremely viscous on the palate. It's not viscous at all on the palate. So it kind of... It's a yummy, delicious finish. Just wish it was a little thicker. Um, that's just really, really, really analyzing it. But I'm gonna take another sip, and, and the finish might change a little bit. But overall, just really, really, really nice. Uh, almost like an in between. I've never had this style of bourbon before, so it's almost like something in between a scotch and a bourbon. It's kind of like right there in the middle. So, so really unique for us to try this. I'd say that's a good way of putting it. And uh, you know, obviously. That's, that's due to the ABV. So on one side, like us, a lot of times with scotch and with especially the old style, uh, powerful sherry bombs, we want like blast of flavor from the high alcohol content that soaked up all the flavor from the cast. We don't care as much about drinkability, but the good side of it is, it is just the perfect after dinner dram. So drinkable, so luscious so light and creamy mouthfeel. And now that I've had it a couple times, I would say, and it's, it's very uh, pleasant, some of the oak, some of the wood play that you get from a bourbon is showing up. So it is definitely leaning more toward a bourbon, but I'd say it's a good way of putting it. It's somewhere in between the spectrum of a scotch and a bourbon. It's definitely probably the most unique bourbon I've ever had. And uh, just, yeah, same with the nose on the palate, just so many gourmet and luscious desserts. So enjoyable. I'm gonna go one more big, big sip, see if we can get something else out of it. Yeah, again, like Darby said, not overly complex, more just drinkable, delicious, luscious. It is so juicy. So juicy. It's crazy. Yeah. It's almost like, it's just too drinkable. It's almost a flaw that is so drinkable. Like it's, cause it's like, I can almost like drink it. Like it's- Chug it. <laughs> you don't want to chug it. It's too special to chug, but no, it but, is. No, but it almost has, it's, it's so palatable. Not alcoholic in any way. It, it is almost like you could drink it, almost like a, a very high alcoholic beer or wine. You could almost drink it that easily. It's definitely not like a hard spirit or whiskey. Yeah. It's a very luscious mouthfeel. Um, by luscious, I mean that juiciness. It's not mouth coating. And, and, and the flavors don't fully stay on. They kind of... I do have, you know... I do have some flavors in the back of my tongue, but 
right away within like 20 to 30 seconds, the majority of the flavor is now lingering on, on the palate, but really good. There's a couple things this, this, this thing did, this uh, bourbon did for me. It right away lowered my score probably for every other bourbon I've ever rated by one or two points. Yeah. That's like one thing that right away it did. Um, um, that being said, it, that is, it's really, really good. We haven't gotten to spend a ton of time with it. I'm sure if we had several different drams of this, we can get a more accurate score. But just from this one time of trying it, I give this a 91 out of 100, which is a very, very good score. And as I'm saying that, it's also lowering probably almost every bourbon I've tried before this by one or two points. Yeah. So it's doing those two things for me. Yeah, again, I mean, I would, I would love to try this at cask string. Oh. Um, obviously, you know, the lower ABV is, you know, get, get a little less flavor, less complexity, but yeah. almost too drinkable, too luscious, too enjoyable. Yeah. But all in all, I would say the same. I'd say a 91. And so far, and like Darby said, it is true. The same way with, with scotch, we have all these, these older, rare, amazing bottles you have to kind of recalibrate all your previous scores. So definitely almost every other bourbon score of mine would get lowered by, like Narby said, probably a point or two. And I would say 90 is, for me, is really good for a bourbon. It's yeah. a very, very good score. Yeah, and, and keep in mind, when we score, we score in general of quality and enjoyment, kind of a combination of quality and enjoyment, and we don't factor in price unless we tell you. Sometimes a bottle could be like $60 and it's just, amazing and be like, you know what, this does get an extra point just because of price. 99, 99% of the time, we don't factor in price. It could be $50 or it could be $10,000. We just go by quality and enjoyment. Um, so when we're rating bourbons, we're comparing it to everything we've tried. It's not a separate bourbon score, right? If this was a separate bourbon score and if I was rating it against only other bourbons, it would score higher, but I'm comparing it against everything I've tried, you know? So, um, Really, really delicious. Um, another thing this does for me is it makes me really curious about older bourbons, something Ooh. that um, we haven't gotten into. And it's whiskey so expensive, mm. so it's always so scary, you know, putting in that investment for something really, really old that's super expensive. But once again, this came from one of our viewers, very generous. Uh, he wanted to know our opinion on it. Good man. We liked it a lot, man. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Cheers. Cheers.